Today on Community Cooking, we have guest chef and registered dietitian Jessica Bodwin making another healthy meal. We're making a three green soup served with a roasted pepper and goat cheese sandwich. It's a twist on your boring soup and sandwich meal. You won't want to miss it. We are cooking with some of the best chefs from right here in our own community. So grab a seat, get comfortable. We've got another great meal for you. This is your Community Cooking. Welcome to Community Cooking. I am your host, Kirk Lines. In our kitchen today is registered dietitian Jessica Bodwin. Hi. Hello. How, how are you? I'm good. How are you? <laughs> Doing well, thanks. Welcome back for the uh, dozenth Auntie? time or whatever, More right? More or less, yeah. <laughs> Great. Now, you are a registered dietitian at Providence Little Company and Mary Hospital right here in Torrance, California, and you uh, you do a lot of one-on-one -on -one with patients, correct? Absolutely. One of my favorite things to do on the job is to work with patients to talk about ways that they can improve their quality of life through nutrition and through physical activity, um, and uh, ways that they can maximize nutrient density, use less salt, cook at home more often. Right, and, and that's and that's what you do, and you're bringing us mm -hmm. healthier meals. A lot of times plays or riffs on things that we've seen before, but, but, but definitely uh, boosting the nutrients and making them healthier. Absolutely. Well, we are surrounded by nutrition today. It's like a, for it's like a forest of nutrition, right? <laughs> Dark leafy greens are one of um, the most under-consumed vegetables, um, and so we're going to talk about ways that you can uh, make them healthy and delicious um, and just bring more greens to your life. Yeah, they get a bad rap, right? I mean, you know, it's always like they'll, they'll get your kids to eat their green, green leafy vegetables, and it's like <laughs> it shouldn't be that hard. These are no. delicious. No, they are. And, you know, price point-wise, it's, it's a very affordable meal. Absolutely. And there's so much variety in the greens group. I think yeah. sometimes we get stuck in a rut with the same type of green over and over, but sure. really there's, uh, we're going to talk about ways that you can make um, a lot of different types of greens into one delicious dish. Well, kale is the, the, the flavor of the yeah. month, right? <laughs> it is, it's yeah. been for a little while now, so we're not really like, you know, breaking any news here, right. but but uh, we've got a lot of other greens. We are, now, mm -hmm. we were going to first make our, our three green soup? Yes. Okay. Why don't you run us through the ingredients we're going to need for that? Okay, so for the three green soup, today we're going to start with some thinly sliced onions, uh, garlic, I've got some Yukon gold potatoes, about a pound of those. Okay. Um, we're going to use a couple, uh, three different greens specifically, collard greens, Swiss chard, um, here I've got some rainbow chard. Beautiful. Um, and then I also brought over some dandelion greens and some arugula. So and we've got a um, actually four. I just counted four greens. <laughs> four greens today. So this is these are the dandelion greens mm -hmm. right here. Mm -hmm. Very delicious. Yeah, a lot of us think of dandelions as just being a weed, but they and um, our arugula is sort of buried in here, yeah. right? <laughs> it's, it's a and little it's not shorter. the baby. It's not the baby arugula. <laughs> no. It's the, the the regular arugula. Fully grown arugula. Okay. And did you mention the stock? No. There's a couple of other ingredients. So we've got my homemade vegetable broth. Oh, well made. Um, that nice. I just made the other day. Um, and we're also going to use, of course, a little olive oil to saute. And then to season it all, we're going to brighten the soup really nicely with some gremolata, which is okay. an Italian seasoning. What do we have here? Um, the balsamic vinegar actually is going to be part of our sandwich in a little bit. Oh, um, okay. All right. So yeah. we're not using that right away. Not quite yet. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. For the gremolata, though, what we're going to do is take some parsley, dice that up nicely, and add a little bit of lemon zest and some finely grated garlic. Great. So and pretty that's going to be a little topping on the soup. Exactly. All right. Where, where should we get started? So the first thing that we'll do is go ahead and thinly slice those onions and the garlic. Um, we're going to get those started on the saute. And you said sliced, correct? Yes, okay. yes, thinly sliced. So while you, you do that, got it. on the garlic. I'm just taking three cloves of garlic um, and we'll start with the onions before adding the garlic. Kinda just so we don't sliced. burn them? Exactly. And I'm going to be doing a nice slice on the garlic today um, instead of a dice, just okay. to kind of mirror the onions. Alright. Yeah. Easy peasy so far. Yeah. How did you make your vegetable stock? <clears throat> um, so I usually use uh, carrots, celery, and onion. And the nice thing is you don't have to make them look nice. You can chop them up as rough as you can. Yeah. Saute that with a little bit of oil. I throw in some mushrooms for vegetable stock to bring in some umami flavor. Um, and then I also use vegetable scraps that I've saved in my freezer. Um, usually Good call. Usually like a little Ziploc bag. Anytime I'm peeling carrots using the ends of onions, I'll throw those in the freezer and save them for the next time I make a vegetable right. broth. Yeah, they're going to save for a long time. So. Yeah. And it's a good way to not waste. 
Absolutely. This time I ended up with um, actually two full court uh, bags worth of uh, vegetables. To and and I think one thing we should mention mm. is not every vegetable is good for a vegetable stock. Yes. Uh, not so much beets. No. Because they're going to make them red. A pink stock. Or anything sort of like kind of gassy, like like you know cabbage yeah. or Brussels sprouts. Not awesome or broccoli. Yes, you it's don't want to keep those crucifer cruciferous vegetables. But for your definitely broth. anything aromatic: mm -hmm. the onion, the celery, the the carrots, parsnips, rutabagas, turnips, things like that. You yep. know, or, or, or greens too. Ends of greens. Ends of greens, exactly. Sure. And then to give it some more um, nuance and depth, I throw in some peppercorns, uh, a couple of bay leaves, for and sure. some sprigs of thyme, as well as parsley if you've got it on hand. Absolutely. So, okay. Yeah. Great. So. First things first, we're going to get the um, oil shimmering, just about a tablespoon or so of oil. And that is olive oil? Olive oil is what I'm using today, yeah. Right. We're not going to be doing a whole lot of cooking with it, just going to get the onions going um, so we can use that Is one. there anything I can start chopping for you, you know, while you're doing that? We're going to need the potatoes next. How would you um, like those cut? Uh, about a half inch dice would be great for the potatoes. A half inch dice, yeah. all right. And you want all four? Uh, yes, please. It's about a pound's worth of potatoes. Ooh, actually, a little bit over a pound, but... We're making this into a meal, so might as well. Potato yes, we are. Yeah, well, that's definitely going to make it hearty, correct? Exactly. You know, that's that, that, that's going to bulk it up for you. That's it. Now like I need that. to shrink on that. So I'm just going to saute these until they're a little tender, about five minutes or so. Um, get them a little bit translucent, softer. Bring out some of those um, flavors. So not necessarily put color on them, but just kind of. Bring yeah. out the water. Exactly. You got it. And then turn that down just a smidge. You want kind of a medium heat. You don't want them to kind of caramelize too much. I'm going to utilize some of these bowls yeah, so that I can pass you these a lot easier than using the hand method. You got it. All right. And so, I like, I, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, we're going to add the potatoes and the collards at the same time. So I'm going to go ahead and get started on taking the stems out of the collards and then, again, chopping them into a nice half inch uh, right. dice. Right. Yeah, I, I, I really like the Yukon Gold potato quite a bit. Oh, yeah. It's this a is nice a great potato. potato. It's, it's, what's, what's neat about it, what's sort of interesting about, about it is that uh, it's not quite a starchy potato. It's not quite a waxy potato. Mm -hmm. It's somewhere in between. So you can use it in so many different yeah, dishes. Yeah, so it's very, very like utilitarian. Absolutely. And if you're going to keep one potato on you, because I travel with potatoes, <laughs> th this would be it, right? Yeah, I mean, for yeah. me at least, for me, you know, because like uh, you know the the uh, the red bliss or the, the the white rose, those are those are very waxy. And then yeah. you've got your russets, where it, they're extremely starchy. Yeah. And. That you can't always mix and match. No, absolutely. Yeah, some of them work better with dry heat. Others work better with moist heat. And Without a doubt. This is something you can do a little bit of both with. Yeah, you could make a French fry out of this. Yep. You Let's could you could do a, a nice like roasted potato with it. You could even do a baked potato with it. Yeah. Which is that's the that's the hard part is getting something that can do both of those. You know, or or, or throw it in a soup. Exactly. It works well in dry and moist. Mashed heat. potatoes, great for mashed potatoes. Oh yeah, potatoes. yeah, definitely. All right, these are getting a nice little caramelization on them. I think it's these are cooking up pretty nicely. I'm going to throw in the garlic um, in just a moment once we're ready for that. And then I'm just like I said, chopping this up into about a half inch dice. We're going to cook this along with the potatoes in the broth because collards need a little bit more time to kind of break down nicely. So. Yeah, they are, a, uh, they are a very sturdy green, aren't they? Yes. Yeah, and that's the key. With this soup, you can actually substitute a lot of different greens into it. Um, the collards you want to add with the potatoes because they need a little bit more time. Or if you're using another type of hearty green, um, you want to add them in earlier. Um, the chard that we're going to use, we're going to um, add and after about five or ten minutes of the potatoes simmering, so okay, you don't want that to cook for too long. It tends to wilt a little bit quicker. Yes. Yeah. And then um, the potatoes, I would imagine the, the starches from them are going to sort of release and like maybe give the soup a little bit, bit more viscosity itself, the broth. They do, yeah. <clears throat> um, they add a nice little starchiness, kind of thickening, and thickening it up where chicken yeah. broth normally would or things like that. I'm going to throw in these potatoes. Yeah, we are good to go. We are good to go there. So yeah, we're putting most of the ingredients in here um, at this stage, throwing in the potatoes, 
the broth. All right. Big old jug of broth here. And get that simmering. And about one cup of water. So I got four cups of broth, one cup of water. I'm gonna throw in my little bay leaf. Which we sort of need to patrol and watch. Yes. We're gonna to wanna to remove that before you serve it. You don't wanna chew on that bay no, leaf. No, 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 no. No. <laughs> Potential trip to the emergency room. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. You always wanna be careful, especially in a soup like this. You wanna be very careful to make sure you fish that out because it can hide in the collards. <laughs> right. So, absolutely. Um, so we also need to prepare the chard um, as well as the arugula and the dandelion greens. I was thinking about two cups worth of the dandelion greens would okay, be good. Okay, why don't I get started on that? Okay, and I'll get working on these chard. And just like with the collard two. greens, I'm gonna yeah. say eyeball it. Two cups. <laughs> there we go. There you go. <clears throat> and you can use rainbow chard. You can use plain old white chard. Um, yeah, very pretty much. Pretty close in taste. Yeah. The two. You can even save these stems from chard um, because they sound And you okay with the stems on the? Yes. Okay, because mm -hmm. they are a, uh, a more delicate. Yes. A more delicate stem on the dandelion greens. Yeah, I've used chard stems in a couple of different things. I've used it in like a vegetable saute. I've made omelets with it. There's That's a lot about of things two cups. Can do. Thank you. And like I was saying, you can definitely use other greens. Um, it's best to get out of the rut of your typical greens. There's spinach, of course. There's watercress. You could use... Um, watercress, delicious. Oh, yeah. Love nice watercress. Nice peppery bite to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. A little bit of an acquired taste for some. Yeah. yeah. But but these other ones, fairly fairly straightforward, fairly, uh, you know, I, I think they're just going to be, they're, at the end of the day, it's going to be greens. Yeah. You know, especially when you've been cooking them in soup like this. Yeah. So you can pretty much, if you only have spinach on hand, again, you can make this soup with just spinach. There's a lot of different ways you can go about this. For sure. Let's do that. Give these a rough chop. Doesn't have to be perfect. These cook down so nicely that they yeah. can fit into a spoon. Yeah, they do cook down quite a bit, don't they? Yeah. I'll get some of these stems. I'll bring this up to a boiling. And once that gets boiling, like I said, about 10 minutes before you add the next batch of greens or so. Um, because you just want those to cook longer yeah. and get a little bit of, of a head start. That's it. Okay. So, we'll save those so then for later. Once, once that cooks for 10 minutes longer, Ooh, we would add these, and then how much longer from there? Um, <laughs> from there, about five minutes once you've added the rest of the greens. Um, and then um, we'll finish it with just a little salt and pepper to taste. Um, and then the, on top, we're going to garnish it with some gremolata. Oh, and okay. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Should I start mm -hmm. chopping some parsley for yes, you? Yes. Um, All right. And I would imagine Wonderful. you want a pretty fine chop, correct? Yes, yeah, this is going to be a very fine chop. I'm going to add the arugula Perfect. to the uh, the dandelion greens so that I can make your gremolata in this bowl. How about that? that? Sounds good. Thank you. Okay. All right, you got some just some regular old Italian flat leaf parsley. Yep, I like the flat leaf as opposed to the curly leaf. I like okay. them both. I mean, yeah. just for different things. Yeah. <clears throat> different things. Sometimes I like the texture that the curly, mm. the curly provides. Yeah. And um, along with the parsley and the gremolata, I'm going to zest up some lemon. Um, you can use a microplane. If you don't have a microplane, you can uh, use a vegetable peeler to get some of the lemon zest off and then chop it finely. So, You know, and at this point in the ball game, we should all have sort of like, I think, and I don't mean that in a, in a rude way. I really yeah. don't. <laughs> yeah. But a, a microplane is so useful. Oh, yeah. For, for so many things because... One, it's going to be, uh, you know, for, for zesting anything, whether mm -hmm. it's a, a lemon, a lime, or an orange, or a grapefruit, what have you, mm -hmm. um, or, or, or Parmesan cheese. Yeah. Oh, I use it on Parmesan all it's the time. It's great if you have, like, chocolate that you want to grate Ooh. on top of a dessert, like a, like a nice dark chocolate that you want to grate on something. That's a great idea. Uh, yeah. I mean, there's a lot. Uh, I even use it sometimes. Uh, I'll even do a little bit of grated hard-boiled egg. I like it on top of... Um, Spinach salad. Nice. Instead of instead of sliced hard boiled egg. Yeah. Little so I don't know. I'm not. I don't want to say pedestrian, but it's just it's just a little big. Yeah. A little big, and, and you know you grate it, and it almost looks like Parmesan cheese That's when good. you do that. Yeah, mm. elevating the dish a little bit. Yeah, delicious, delicious. So you know, and you can find those at a lot of markets even, mm -hmm. but definitely a cooking store, and we're not talking a lot of money. No. Yeah, yeah and something that ones. you're gonna. I have, I have my original microplane. Wow. Yeah. Never no, this is the only one I've ever owned. I've only owned one. 
Yeah. You can use it to grate some garlic if you ever need like. Um, uh, yes. You want to add fresh garlic to a dish, but you don't want people biting into chunks of garlic. There you go. You there you go. It. That's the that's the point. I mean, it's like anything you need that like sort of fine grate on. It's much better than a box grater mm -hmm. or you know anything like that. Yeah. Let's bring this up a little bit. There we go. Starting to see some bubbles forming. We're getting there with the boil. Mm -hmm. I'm actually going to do a little bit of extra garlic today. Okay. Normally I put one clove in. Do Live on the now. edge, you Jessica. <laughs> Live on the edge. Absolutely. Garlic is great for anti-inflammatory. Um, very healthy. And it tastes good. I love garlic. But you do have to you, you do have to watch it a little bit with raw. Yeah. Because raw can sneak up on you. And and you just gotta know that 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 when you make something with raw garlic like this, the longer it sits, the more garlicky it's gonna mm -hmm, taste. Mm-hmm. And I would recommend if you're going to use gremolata, make it make it fresh. Um, I I tried making some to keep in my refrigerator. It just doesn't keep very well. It's well, what happens? It just sort of it, it sort of depends. There's a couple of things, mm -hmm. a couple of reasons behind it. One is is that if if there's too much zest or too much acid, th this will lose its green. Yes. That's one thing. Yeah. The second thing is is that, and I I, I had a lot of experience working in 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 the deli business, mm -hmm. and so you know if you go into the deli, there's all kinds of deli salads that are out, and some of them you know are are, are olive oil based. Whenever you put olive oil into a refrigerator, it's going to coagulate. Yeah, yeah. It's going to coagulate. That's true. So if you make a dressing and it's all like like olive oil, it will solidify and then you've got to bring it out and you've got to let it. Well, if you're, work, if you, if you're doing a deli and you're making deli salads, you can't do that. It has to look delicious and be mm -hmm. ready to go, right? Mm -hmm. So the trick is uh, cut it with canola oil. Okay. So go 50-50. That lowers the temperature at which it coagulates in the refrigerator. It, what it, it does is it just it, it, it gives it enough... Uh, um, what, what, whatever it is, scientifically, not sure, to just not solidify, and it will mm -hmm. stay nice and loose for you and nice and fresh. Mm -hmm. All right, That's so right. we've got nice, finely chopped parsley here. Is that good? That looks beautiful. Okie dokie. We'll mix that up with the um, zest over here and the garlic. I will, I will. Go ahead and combine those. Yeah, I want to do that for you. Thank you. And do you put any olive oil in this? Um, yes. Got a little, a little bit, bit of extra olive oil bit. there. Give it a yeah. little sheen. Help it come together. Right, all right. And like I said, you could cut it with a touch of canola. Yeah. But you don't want a, a, a lot of olive oil, correct? Not a lot, it's yeah. It's a fairly tight mixture. About this much right here? That's perfect, yeah. Okay, a yeah. tablespoons worth. That mm, seems about right. A couple of teaspoons. And then some salt, too? Yep. Um, I already put a little bit of salt with the zest in the ah, garlic, so I think okay. we're good, yeah. So just like that, just perfect. so it wets it. That's it. Beautiful. All right. But I tell you what, we've got our soup cooking. We're going to add the greens yep. now. Yep. Why don't we do that? Let that go, and we'll clean up here, take a break, come back. We're going to make our roasted pepper and goat cheese sandwich. Sounds like a plan. All right, don't go away. Welcome back. I'm here with registered dietitian Jessica Bodwin, and we have literally put our soup on the back burner. <laughs> literally, <laughs> yes. Just kind of doing its thing. <laughs> Time to make sandwiches. That's right. We're going to make um, one of my favorite sandwiches um, from uh, a trip to Ontario that I took once that has um, some roasted peppers, a little bit of goat cheese. Um, we're going to be using some basil, um, some thinly sliced red onion, and uh, we're going to serve this all on a whole grain rye bread. And some Kalamata olives as well, Kalamatas, too. Kalamatas, exactly. Thank okay. You. And, and, and we've got the peppers already roasted. Right. Uh, we're talking, would you do it over an open flame? No, actually, these I roasted in the oven at oh, 500 okay. degrees. Um, okay. Turning them a couple of times for about uh, 30 minutes or so. So they get minutes. nice and black. Blackened on the outside. And then once you take them out of the oven, cover them with some tin foil nice and tightly using a towel or something like that, obviously, because the sheet pan's going to be very hot. Um, but what you want to do is trap the steam inside um, with some tin foil, let them sit until they're kind of cool and ready to handle, and the skins pull them off super right. nicely. I do it right on top of my stove top yeah. because I have a gas grill at home. Yes. Or not grill, but gas uh, range at home. Yeah. And I'll just go right on top of that and then stick them either in a paper bag, yep. roll it up, sit, 
10 minutes, like you said, skins come right off, and this is what you get. Yep. And you've added some, uh, some Kamada olives to that as well, right? I have. I put in some balsamic vinegar. I poured in some of the juice from the um, peppers, a little bit of olive oil, okay. garlic, and Kalamatas. And I did that while they were still warm, because the warm peppers will absorb more of the flavor. Okay, so uh, what's first with the sandwich? We're going to make so, the cheese? Yeah, we're going to make this as a press sandwich. So let's go ahead and start assembling that. I've got some uh, fresh Montrachet cheese right here, um, okay. some goat cheese that I'm going to mix with some chives, All right. rather than buying one of the store-bought ones that's already mixed together. Can can I cut your onion for you? Please. We're going to have those thinly sliced. Thinly, yes. Sandwich yeah. has to be thinly sliced. I agree. Yeah. I agree. I've already All chopped right. up these chives. I'm just gonna we don't need them. a ton here. Just enough to just cover that slices. sandwich. Just a few slices. Yeah, exactly. We've already got the onion flavor from the chives, but this brings another color and another little bit of um, kind of Yeah, what the heck, right? Why not? I agree. Yeah. Yeah, I like this combination too. Roasted red bell peppers and, <gasps> and uh, goat cheese. That's Great classic. combination. Yeah. Absolutely. You can even throw in a little bit of like portobello mushroom in Ooh, there too, right? You could marinate those in some uh -huh. like too. Yeah, yeah. You could grill them. You could grill yeah. them, Ooh. slice them up, keep them whole. Doesn't nice matter. And mm -hmm. That's always like a good thing uh, uh, if you're doing a, a barbecue. Let's say you're doing burgers and dogs. Yeah. And you, you know you're gonna have some vegetarians there. Pick up like four portobellas. They're so easy. Hold on to them. Mm -hmm. And if, if 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 the vegetarians show up. You know, <laughs> pop the stem out, clean up the gills, hey, even brush if they them with don't. some oil on the grill, right? <laughs> well, if not, I'm saving them for me. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm, I'm saving saying. them for me. Those are good for omnivores alike. <laughs> remove this outer, yes. it's just a little, it's a little tough. tough. Right, right. And then just nice and thin here. So while you're doing that, I'm going to start getting our sandwiches ready because we're going to press these panini style. Um, I don't happen to own a panini press, so okay. I, I do it a little bit differently at home. You don't need to have a fancy panini press in you order do to not. make pressed sandwiches. No. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and spread a little bit of this goat cheese on the bottom layer. Nice and thick. Okay. I'm using the fork. You could use a knife. And then how do you, are, are you <laughs> dealing with the basil? Do you need that chiffonade or are you keeping uh, no. it whole? No, we're going to leave it whole. Perfect, actually. like yeah. lettuce. Exactly. Kind of have that. Oh, yeah, there you go. Protect the other side of the bread from the... Um, the juice from the peppers. Okay. So that's that's the that's actually why you put the cheese on the bottom. Um, the peppers are kind of juicy, and you don't want them to kind of make the bread really soggy. That's why it's always the, the motto is crust to crust is a must. Hey. Yeah. It's a must know. because that way you don't get the seepage into the bread. Yes. And I think you need these next. Yes. Part. So the next layer is the pre-marinated peppers. So I'm just going to take a couple of those and layer them on nicely. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Along with some of these kalamatas. Uh-huh. You got them in there for a reason? Exactly. It's so briny. And, and how are our pans doing? Do you have them on the heat yet? Yeah. Perfect. This one's getting good and hot. We're going to get it nice and toasty. I'm going to put a high heat on this one. Just kind of oh, yeah. drape them on nicely. Oh, that's going to be Later some down. sandwich right there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Nice and thick. That's why right. pressing it helps. Right. We'll take the basil next, please. Yes, uh, or the onions or the basil? Um, both, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Here are your onions. You should put the, yeah, why don't we put the onions on? Just get that no. out. Yeah. yeah, I'll do that for you. Because the basil's like a nice there we go. sweet lettuce to add to this. Um, so then I'm going to top these up and get them onto the pan. I'm going to put a little bit of olive oil down. You could also use vegetable oil. And that pan's nice and hot. Oh, right. yeah, that's Ooh, what you want, though. Yeah. That's what I'm you want. This is, a, this is a very, very sturdy bread. Yes. This is a, a, made with rye flour, so it's a seedless rye. Exactly. So you're not going to get that, that, the flavor of the caraway, mm -hmm. but you get the, it's, it's, it's rye flour. And actually, it's a, it's, a, it's a healthier flour. It is. It's a whole grain um, making bread with rye. So right. what I'm going to do is just going to hit, I'm using a heavy pan. This is a nice and heavy bottom pan. Right. You can weight it if you want to. I'm going like to just occasionally press it. Like a big can of, like, 10 gauge, 15 gauge uh, tomatoes on it or something yep, like that. Yep, that's it. Or uh, a kettle with a little bit of water in it. Kettle with water would yep. work also, yes. You can also just kind of push it down with your hands. This is nice and heavy, so I'm going to let it sit. Yeah. Um, so we're going to cook it on both ends since this pan is not hot. Um, you got to eat both ends. we got to right. cook it on both ends, right? right? Absolutely. All right. So what's left? Is that about it? That's about all we do to make this sandwich. It's pretty simple. Very all few right. ingredients. Um, just the, the peppers making that ahead of time is, is part of that. And, and, and feel free. You could, mm -hmm. you could do, uh, you could do a lot with this. If it's, if you, do, a lot of people don't like goat cheese. Yeah. So borson, you do like a borson, like, sure. a, like a cream cheese base spread. Mm -hmm. wouldn't Absolutely. Be, wouldn't be bad. Yeah. Um, 
from the south, maybe you need some pimento cheese. Yeah. Hey right? <laughs> Why not? Switch up the veggies in there, artichoke hearts. Ooh, good idea. Yeah, that would yeah. be great too. Yeah, absolutely. Like you said, portobello mushrooms would be good in here too. Lots of different ways you can go with that. So I'm going to let that, ooh, I think it's actually getting pretty close. Let's take a look, peek at the other Give side. Give it a look-see. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm starting to get some caramelization. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's great. On the one side. Feel it sticking a little bit. Ready? Flip. Woo! <laughs> also known as GBD, Golden Brown Andalusis. <laughs> I like your acronyms. Right? So let that kind of cook a little bit more. The other thing about this dish, and part of the reason why I've combined this with the three green soup, is peppers are a great source of vitamin C. Um, and so when you combine the iron from plants, like you find in greens, with a source of vitamin C, it actually enhances how much iron your body can absorb from that same meal. Okay. So this is meant to complement each other, both in flavor profile and in terms of nutrition. Right. Yeah. Got another one for you in there. Marinated and grilled eggplant. Ooh, yeah. I'm sticking with the nightshades. <laughs> <laughs> got, got me some peppers, some mushrooms, and some, some oh, eggplant. Right. right, they all have that in common. That's hilarious. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, that looks Ooh. great. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think those are going to be just about done. Some of that goat cheese dripping out a little bit. Keep that yeah, I'm going to be a happy camera. This is a good meal. Oh, this yeah. is a good meal for me. <laughs> I, I, like, I like soup and sandwich to begin with. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, keep it healthy. But at the same time, it's a pretty decadent sandwich right there. Yeah, this is, you're not going to go hungry. goat cheese <laughs> oozing out of the front of that one. I know. That Look at that. Good. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh. But I tell you what, why don't we let those finish up? Sure. Get cleaned up here, make us some plates. All right. We'll eat. Sounds good. All right. Don't go away. Hi, I'm Hunter Hayes. I know myself and I know my buzz warning signs. There's no reason to take any risks that aren't necessary. Buzz driving is drunk driving. Welcome back. I am with registered dietitian Jessica Bodwin, and we're ready to go here, right? Looks good. We've got our soup, and we've got with the gremolata and some toasted pine nuts, mm -hmm. and we're just going to kind of give that a little swirl, right? We want to get that all in there. Oh, absolutely. That's the the, the whole point of that. Mm, brings a nice bright freshness. Yeah. Oh, and as soon as it hits the heat, it gets real aromatic. You can smell that. Yeah. Oh yeah. All right. So let's go in here. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, mm. yeah. I definitely like it with the with the gremolata mm -hmm. in there. That's really nice. Mm -hmm. That really brightens it up. And this is um, wonderful for uh, a cold winter day, but it's also light enough to be a good spring or summer soup. For sure. Mm -hmm. For sure. All right. Mm -hmm. Now this thing here, <laughs> where you're gonna force me to hinge my jaw <laughs> See how to get a bite here, but this. I'm I'm willing to do it. Here we go. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. That is downright delicious. Mm. I like that a lot. That is really good. Wow. <laughs> There's a lot going on. Yes. Yeah. The warm goat cheese. Tangy mm. goat cheese, sweet pepper, brininess of the olives, the basil, a little bit of mm. the sharpness from the red onion. Boy, that is, that's fun. That's mm. good. Thank you. I, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Good combo. Good combo. Excellent. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Jessica, you did it again. Healthy, hearty, but you know what? <laughs> I mean, it's 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 conscious eating. It is. We like that. We like Nutrient that. dense. You know, it just goes to show you we really are cooking with some of the best chefs from right here in our own community. On behalf of myself, everyone here at the show, Jessica, thank you for watching Community Cooking, and have a nice day. If you'd like a copy of the recipe seen on this show, send us a self-addressed stamped envelope to the Office of Cable and Community Relations. That's 3350 Civic Center Drive, Suite 200, in Torrance, California, 90503. Be sure to note the show number displayed on the screen. And don't forget, you can find all the fresh ingredients used on today's show at the Farmer's Market. Visit the one here in Torrance at Wilson Park. That's located at 2200 Crenshaw Boulevard. They're open every Tuesday and Saturday from 8 a.m. until 1 p.m. 
rain, or shine. And if you'd like to be a guest on our show, email us at communitycooking at torrentca.gov and check us out online at youtube.com slash torrentcitycable and like us on Facebook at Community Cooking TV.